Welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications. This is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and it's spring semester 2013. Basically what we're going to learn is how to get pixel values for point locations and then also how to get pixel statistics within polygons. So here's an example. We have a raster predicts for every pixel whether it was burned or unburned. And then we have some validation or ground truth points. So what we want to do is compare these validation points with the pixel values. So for every point that's a triangle, it should have a pixel value of one representing it was unburned. And for every location that's a circle, it should have a pixel value of a 2 indicating that that pixel was burned. Okay, if we were going to do this using the tools in our toolbox, what we would have to do is use the tools that are in the Spatial Analyst toolbox. So basically what we would have to do is go to Customize Extensions and then basically make sure that we have the Spatial Analyst extension checked on. So we would check on this Spatial Analyst extension. We need to do the same thing in our ArcPy script. Okay, so early in our script, when we're working with rasters, what we want to do is check out the Spatial Analyst extension. So basically what we could do is ask the question, is it available? And if it's available, then we could check it out. And if it's not available, we'll add this message error, could not get spatial analyst extension, so we'll exit our Python script. And to exit it, we'll just use the sys.exit Python function. So we'll execute this code. So now we have the spatial analyst extension checked out. Okay, so one approach to compare the points with the pixels would be to convert points to a raster and then compare that ground truth raster with our raster of burn versus unburn pixels. And to do that, we would use the combine tool. So one approach would be to go arcpy.sa for spatial analyst dot, and then all the tools available for spatial analyst. So for example, the combine tool. But typically what most programmers will do is they'll import the spatial analyst tools, and that way we could just Instead of say, have to saying arcpy.sa.tool, we could just set, use the tool name. So typically at the beginning of a, a script with rasters, most programmers will go from arcpy.sa, import all the geoprocessing tools that are available from the spatial analyst extension. So that would be an asterisk. And once we do that, then if we just type in combine, for example, it's available for us. It's smart enough to go, oh, that's a spatial analyst tool, so I'll just, it will be available to you. So now we can access any spatial analyst tool very simply by just typing in the name of the geoprocessing tool. Okay, before we convert our points to a raster, we want to make sure that the pixels in our truth raster will be perfectly aligned pixels in our uh, burn unburn raster. So to make sure they're going to be perfectly aligned, we'll set some arcpy.env variables. Okay, so early on in our script, what we'll do is we'll set some arcpy environment variables. So the first thing is we'll set our workspace. And then when we convert our points to a raster, we want the pixel size and the pixel extent to perfectly align each pixel with our burn raster. So we'll create a object representing our burn raster and we could use the arcpy.list raster and then that requires a wildcard and a raster type is optional. So we would say list the rasters and the name of our raster is burn unburn. So we would say burn asterisk. So that would create a list and we just want the first raster in that list and it'll just be only one raster in the list but basically we still have to index it to say just give us 
that first raster in the list. So now if we look at burn raster, so now we can set our output cell size to be this exact same as our burn raster. So that would be arcpy.env and then cell size. So cell size is going to be equal to our burn raster. And then also we want our pixels to be exactly aligned with the pixels in this burn raster. So that will be arcpy.env snap raster. So we're going to snap to that burn raster. So now we can convert our points to a raster and we're guaranteed that the pixels will perfectly align with our truth raster compared to our burn raster. So then we would just use arcpy.point to raster conversion and we're going to take our validation points comma and we're going to use the value for truth so that would be ones and twos for unburned and burned and then we'll output that to a raster so I'll output that to truth.tiff so now we've got a truth raster and we can look at that in ArcMap Okay, so we've got our truth raster where one represents unburned, two represents burned, but they're single pixels, so we won't be able to see these single pixels until we zoom way in. So basically, they were created from these validation points, and if we zoom into an area, so here's an area, we're on the ground for this point at that location, it was unburned, and then the single pixel that was created is this pixel, and it has a class value of one, which means it was unburned. And then if we turn off that truth raster, here's the original raster of predicted pixels burned versus unburned. So now we've got a truth raster where we've got single pixels representing the ground truth class of unburn which is a one versus burn which is a two so from our ground truth points we've got 50 pixels that were unburned and 50 single pixels from our ground truth points that were burned and what we want to do is compare these 100 pixels with our burned unburned raster which predicts for every pixel in the entire area um, whether it's burned versus unburned. So the map or the raster has about 83,000 pixels that were unburned and about 242,000 pixels that were burned. So we can use the combine tool to combine these two rasters. So whenever we're working in the spatial analysis extension, it would be whatever you want your output raster to be called equals and then the geoprocessing tool we're going to work with. So in this case we're going to work with the combine geoprocessing tool. So it's going to be combine and in this case we'll combine a list of rasters. So the first item in our list of rasters would be our burn unburn raster and then the second item in our list would be our truth.tiff raster. So we'll execute this tool and it will create a new raster called combine raster that will be in our default geo database or our scratch workspace. And if we look at the output table from that raster, the value is really not important. This is just the first combination, the second combination, the third combination. And basically it's comparing each class. So remember class one was unburned so we had 50 ground truth points that were unburned and 46 of those were correctly classified four of those were incorrectly classified so on the ground they were unburned and on our original burn raster they were predicted to be burned and then all 50 of our ground truth points that were burned on the ground were actually classified as being burned in our burn raster. Okay, so our first strategy was to convert our points to a raster and then combine our truth raster with our burned unburned raster. Another strategy would be to use a tool that extracts pixel values. 
So that tool is called Extract Values to Points. So we're going to use our validation points and our raster burn versus unburned. So go to every point and determine what pixel that point's sitting in and then extract that pixel value and put it in some output point feature class. So we'll name this points pixel values that shape. So we execute this tool and that tool gives us the original ground truth value for each point and then what that pixel value was at that point location. So then we could run the frequency tool to come up with a table Okay, so we run the frequency tool, and the input is our point feature class that has both the original ground truth values and the pixel values. So we'll create an output DBF table, and the frequency fields are truth, so that was what the value was at our ground truth points, either a 1 for unburned, a 2 for burn, and then what the pixel value was at those locations. And then we could look at the output table, which is validation table D. Okay, and we got the same results that we got originally using the combined tool with rasters. So we had 50 points that were on the ground burned, and in our raster, they were correctly classified to be burned, a class two. We had 46 points that on the ground were unburned and they were correctly classified to be unburned. We had four points that on the ground were unburned and they were incorrectly classified to be burned. Okay, sometimes you wanna know about pixel values within a polygon or within polygons. So here we have buffer polygons. And if we look at the attribute table, we've got an ID for each buffered polygon, and this is basically each ground truth point was buffered. So what we want to know is within each polygon, something about the pixel values within each polygon. So by ID for each polygon, give us pixel values. So that's a tool called Zonal Statistics as Table, which is a very useful tool. Okay, so the first input would be in zone data. So that is basically going to be what are the polygons that we're interested in. So in this case, it's going to be our buffer polygons. And then the next required thing is what class is defining a zone. So here we're going to say every different ID is a different zone. So therefore, we'll get for each polygon a row in our table. And then what is the raster we want to know the pixel values of? And then what is the output table? So in this case, we'll say output table is polygonstats.dbf. And then we could take the default for our next parameter, no data, how do you want to deal with it? Do you want to give just nothing for that row or do you want to ignore no data values and compute the statistics so we'll ignore no data values and compute the statistics and then what statistic do we want so we could give us within every buffer give us the majority so what's the majority of the pixel values inside each polygon so all the descriptive statistics are available. So we could say, give us all the descriptive statistics. We could say, just give us the mean and a standard deviation, et cetera. We could get, give us the mean, max, whatever you want. So in this case, we'll choose, give us the majority, and then we execute that tool. So then our output table for each buffer polygon, how many pixels were at least half the pixel was in the polygon, and then what was the majority of the pixel values inside each buffer polygon. So if I sort, here's some polygons that had the majority of the pixels inside that polygon were class one, and here's polygons where the majority of the pixels inside that polygon was class two. 
Okay, so the zonal statistics as table works really good with polygons. There's only one problem. It doesn't work with overlapping polygons. So if we made our buffers large and they're overlapping, we'll get incorrect values in our output table if we just ran it just saying, okay, run zonal statistics using this input polygon feature class. So your assignment for our next video session would be to come up with a way to get the zonal statistic within each polygon even if they're overlapping. And I'll go over the solution to that problem at the beginning of our next video session.